Hello everyone and welcome back to day 15 of Bitwise where we build a software hardware stack for a simple computer from scratch. So, um, you know, we're still knee deep in the compiler, but there's light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, last time we uh, did a bunch of work on the mainstream. Um, well, I think on the mainstream, we mostly ended up just kind of walking through um, some of the C standard and how it works for the integer promotions and the usual arithmetic conversions that are relevant when you're doing you know, binary operators and unary operators uh, applied to uh, integers and floats and so on. Um, then on, and, and I think we started, what did we actually code on the mainstream? I can't remember what we coded, um, but at least on the extra stream, we proceeded to implement that. Uh, and um, let's go look at the diffs just to remind myself of what we did on the extra stream that I want to cover. It's quite a lot of chickens that day. Um, right. Oh yeah, a bunch of this stuff I think was added later. Um, but yeah, we added we added support for um, oh right, we added support for all the missing integer types um, that we didn't have. I think previously we just had char and int, and those would and char wasn't really a true integer type. It was just you could have pointers to it for for strings and stuff, but you couldn't really do arithmetic on chars or whatever and convert them to ints. Um, so we hooked all of that up, and then we did. Um, now our constants can not just be ints, but they can be any of these types. And uh, we did operand conversion, so. You can convert from and right now i think i think we actually did more checking in the later check-in but in this version we didn't do any uh legal conversion checks um, but we did do constant conversion so if you convert from you know an int to a un6 uh, to, to a long long or something this is where all that code happens it's done with a macro since there's kind of an n squared matrix of, of conversions um these are just helpers right we implemented the integer promotions from the c standard which this kind of hard no i think this is right um for uh, for any of these types it promotes it to a signed int for others it just leaves it alone and then we did this thing here unify arithmetic operands which implements um the arithmetic conversions in c let me see if i can find it just so you can see how these two things correspond here we go um this thing here so ignore this long double stuff since we don't support long double. Um, but the usual arithmetic conversions are applied in many cases involving a binary operator, also applied to the operands of a ternary expression. Um, but anyway, so th what we implemented is more or less a transliteration of this. So if uh, one operand is double, the other one is converted to double. If one is a float, the other is converted to a float otherwise. Um, it assumes you're dealing with integer operands, and actually, let me uh, assert that for now. Um, um, and um, you know, if after doing these promotions, which will try to promote things to ints, uh, otherwise leave them alone, if they are not the same, so ultimately the goal of this thing is to convert things to a common type. Uh, if these are not the same, you have a bunch of these different cases, I'll just run through them. If the two types have the same, same signedness, so if they're both signed or both unsigned, the lower rank uh, operand is converted to the type of the higher rank operand. So if you have, for example, unsigned short and unsigned int, the unsigned short is promoted or converted to an unsigned int. Um, otherwise, if um, um, if the unsigned operand has greater than or equal rank to the signed operand, then the signed operand is converting to the unsigned type. So for example, if you have a signed int and an unsigned int, that's converted to uh, an unsigned int, which is a case that is so, like that specific case is somewhat notorious. Unsigned int and signed int actually have the same rank. The signed and unsigned counterparts of a type have the same rank. Um, but also in this case would be um, if you have, um, you know, say unsigned long and signed int, that would be promoted to unsigned long. 
um, and this is just the, the reverse case. And here's one that we didn't do correctly on stream, but that was fixed in the check-in. Um, so this here is saying, uh, so if these don't match, uh, then the unsigned operand does not have higher rank than the signed operand. And so this here is checking basically um, if the signed operand and so here we have a mixed signedness, right? Otherwise, this case, this first case would have hit. If we have a mixed signedness, so a signed and an unsigned thing, and the signed thing is big enough, so I use a size of check here, is big enough to accommodate the unsigned type, then the unsigned type is promoted to the um, is to the signed type. So, for example, if I have a signed long and a an unsigned char. That's a mixed signedness. This case doesn't hit because the unsigned char has less rank than the signed long. But this case does hit because size of long is greater than, strictly greater than size of char. Uh, char gets promoted to, unsigned char gets promoted to signed long, right? The signed long, because it's, signed long can accommodate any unsigned char value without, uh, without loss, right? It's not, uh, it's large enough to accommodate any unsigned char value losslessly. This is just the reverse case. Otherwise, this is the other case we didn't handle. No, actually, we did handle this case on stream, but we didn't have the size of check. So here, this final thing is something we didn't do on stream. And in fact, uh, when I was sort of scratching my head, I think this was even on the mainstream, I was trying to think of the case that hit this, and I couldn't see it at the moment. But um, this case here is quite different than the others because what you'll note is that all of these operand conversions that happen up here all of the the target type is always one of the existing types right it's either right type or left type that you convert to but in this final case there's actually a new derived type which did not occur directly in either the left or the right operand and that is the unsigned type corresponding to the signed operands type so a concrete example is if you're on a platform where size of int is equal to size of long, and so this is true on most 32-bit platforms and also true on Windows on x64, um, then um, if I do, let's see, uh, signed long plus unsigned int, let's just walk through the decision tree here. Um, none of these things hit because they're integers. These promotions don't do anything. These the, the types are certainly not the same. Uh, they have different signedness if this doesn't hit. Um, the unsigned operand has ra rank strictly less than the signed operand, so neither of, the, of these cases hit. Um, this case doesn't hit because the sizes are the same. The long can, long long size of is strictly equal. It's 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 equal to size of int. It's not strictly greater than, unlike say size of long being eight uh, versus size of int being four on 64-bit Linux, uh, typically. Um, so these cases don't hit. So this case is ultimately what, what we hit in this uh, combination when, when, when these sizes match. And what we do is we compute the unsigned type corresponding to the signed type. So um, the signed type here is signed long, and so we compute basically unsigned long. And so as a result, we get unsigned long. Anyway, so we implemented all this code this should be quite readable. I mean, the decision tree itself is maybe not totally transparent, but com I mean, it's it's almost reads like pseudocode, right? Um, so this is one thing we ended up doing. And then I think we hooked it up to a few cases, right? We also did the constant expression evaluation um, to accommodate the greater variety of integer types. And the way we ended up doing that is, and I think I cleaned up the code for this in a later check-in, but the way we ended up doing this is rather than handling every combination of operand types, or not combination, but like rather than handling, you know, unsigned char separately and, uns and signed long separately and so on, we promote everything to either unsigned long long or signed long long, do the arithmetic with those maximally wide types, and then convert back to the original type. That gives the same result as if we had done it um, originally, I think. Although I guess there's signed overflow to worry about, which I'm not doing right now. Um, but uh, we can you can make this to work. So this is just to avoid handling all the combinations of operand types in the constant expression evaluator. Um, I think that's probably it for the extra stream. And then we added some test cases to accommodate it. Then we um, 
we there's a bunch of other things on this day yeah we added support for the not equals token to the lexer so it turned out the rest of the compiler actually had support for it but i for some reason i had overlooked it in the lexer so that's in now um now that we have more integer types i did a cleanup pass where there's a bunch of code that was checking for the int type specifically now you can use any integer type for example in array index expressions uh some warning cleanup here i think this factored out um I factored out all this stuff for long, long and unsigned long, long into a separate function. Um, um, right, so this was a long time coming. It was just a bunch of busy work. I went through the resolver and changed every fatal to fatal error where there's a specific uh, location. So this was a pretty big quality of life improvement. So pretty much any error you now make, either in the parser or the resolver um, is going to uh, yield a proper line and file information. So, oh, so this goes through. Interesting. Uh, what's maybe a better example? Let's do, uh, I don't know, void star. Okay, here we go. And yeah, so you can see we even get the proper warning here. And if I double click on it, I go to the right line. So I went through and made all the resolver errors, the type errors and all that stuff. Uh, actually be proper um, what you call it uh, give give proper line information so the data was already there it just had to be plumbed through to the error messages uh, and as related to that I also right now the format is um, I mean let me move back to this so I can show you right now the error format is adapted for MSVC which I know is selfish of me so we're I'm going to sooner than later add a uh, a switch so you can use Unix or GCC style error messages. But right now I'm using this so uh, to scratch my own itch of being able to uh, have a Visual Studio parse this correctly. So yeah, so this is what the errors look like now. Um, and they, yeah, and that should be true for all of the resolver errors. So that was a nice improvement, not very technically meaty, but needed to be done. Um, added the ability to, right, so let me go and look at that. Um, right, this convert operand actually does a check of whether it can convert. It's not complete right now, but it handles, you know, you can convert between any two identical types. You can convert between any two arithmetic types. Um, if you can convert, and this is for the implicit conversions, uh, I, I need to add support for the explicit conversions, but basically right now, uh, you can convert implicitly between two pointer types if either of them is a void star, right? Um, that's how it works in C. So um, that's supported. Um, right, I made uh, compound literals actually be L values. So that, that's how it works in C, by the way. And so this was just a, a simple, like one character change more or less from R value to L value in one, one place in the code. But it means you can do, well, and there's two changes I made actually. One is that um, you can do stuff like this, which is admittedly weird, but um, not something you'd probably want to do. Where's vector? I guess I can put vector here since uh, out of order. Uh, you can do weird stuff like this, and then, I mean, you can do stuff like that, right? Um, because compound literals are all values. So um, this is not useful, but you can do it. And actually it's legal C as well if you want to see what the C code looks like. Um, what was that function called? H. So yeah, this is legal C in case you didn't know. Um, and uh, to go along with that change, I also made it so that compound literals, again, like in C, can actually be used with primitive types, not just with aggregate types. Or not primitive types, uh, scalar types is the C term. So you can also do, um, you can do stuff like this. That should work. And again, that's legal C, even though you wouldn't normally see something like this. The case where this is actually useful, um, very useful, is when you're taking the address of something. So um, you can do this. For example, let 
and uh, so you can take you can take the address of a compound literal. A compound literal is an L value, and in C, the, the storage duration is that of the enclosing scope. So in this case, the enclosing scope is uh, you know if there's a if there's a block like that. Uh, in this case, it's just the top level function block. Um, that's the, the that's the the storage duration of that L value. Um, if you use this a global scope in C, it has this it has static storage duration, right? It's like global uh, storage duration, static storage duration. Um, so yeah, this is pretty useful actually. It means you can do we are we're actually already using it, right? We're using it in uh, the resolver. If you go to like type int, uh, we're using it here. This is the same sort of thing. We use the fact that this you know, this compound literal is an L value, which means we can take its address. Uh, and, and the object denoted by this compound literal has static storage duration. So it's exactly like, you know, we had done something like this um, and uh, and taken its, uh, taken its address. That would totally work, <laughs> I say, and it doesn't work at all. Oh, right, wrong type. Right, so this is from ion, not, oh no. Oh, sorry, I have to do it like this, let's see. But uh, but yeah, but you don't have to do it that way. You can just do it like this. The other case where this is useful in common common usage is if you're passing, if you want to pass like an integer literal or some other literal or a compound literal actually, uh, for, for a compound literal for a struct or something. If you want to pass it to a function that takes its argument by pointer rather than by value, um, this lets you do it sort of in line as an expression without first creating a temporary variable and passing its address, which is uh, annoying. Anytime I write code like this, I feel like I'm writing an assembly language. Um, one of the principal features of higher level languages is expressions. And so I think this is, in some deep sense, is why this is such a monumental change to C's usability is that, you know, I think the, the major quantum leap between something like assembly language and C is expressions and compound literals really makes the expression fragment of the language much more useful in C. So anyway, so that stuff is now supported. Um, Um, boom, boom, boom. Right, integer promotions for unary operands, variadic, oh yeah, variadic, variadic function support. So um, let me quickly demo that. I added support for variadic functions. So printf is obviously the big one in terms of existing code you want to be able to use. So um, if you type x, now it does a printf and um, prints it out. And you can also define your own variadic functions like this VA test. And that all works. And actually, I haven't tested the errors, but if you try to declare something like this, it should actually warn you. Ellipsis must be less parameter in function declaration. And if you try to have two ellipses, um, multiple ellipses and function declaration. So yeah, so that stuff is, is now in. Um, Right now, it's not super useful for your user-defined functions because I, I haven't, I mean, we can add that quite quickly, but I haven't added the standard arc.c type features like uh, VA start, VA arg, this sort of stuff. Um, so right now you, you can declare it, the type system is aware of it, but the principal use is just to be able to use printf uh, and similar pre-existing functions from the standard library. But, uh, but anyway, this is definitely something we need for v0. Uh, in terms, of, let, let me show you the implementation because it's almost trivial. Um, so I, I I had to add a new token, which is the um, the ellipsis token. Uh, a new, new ellipsis token. Just added another case to this uh, decision tree here. Um, and then in the parser, um, I guess a, f a few few cases in type specifiers and in function declarations, I, I needed to handle it when parsing the argument lists. And it's really just like, you know, you can see here, it defaults to being non-variadic. If it sees an ellipsis, it sets this to variadic. And then it just uh, pushes that through all the data structures. So now all these data structures for the type specifiers have this variadic flag. And then in the on the semantic side, um, you know, there's also a variadic property now of this fully resolved function type, uh, and then when you uh, when you handle function calls, uh, it used to be that 
this had to be these two things had to be exactly equal but now the way it works is it's always an error to call a function with too few arguments but it's only an error to call something with too many arguments if the function is not variadic so if you have a variadic function you can provide more uh, more arguments than 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 there are declared parameters um, small note on this in C the way this stuff works is something called the default argument promotions where anytime you pass an argument to a function uh, where that corresponding parameter is uh, like in the variadic section of arguments, like beyond the declared arguments, or if you're using an old old style, or if you're doing something like this, um, which I've t mistyped a, a bunch of times accidentally. But if you call if you call f with like um, you know a char uh, or uh, or a float or something like that, um, or, or if this was like you know if this was variadic. Um, you know, the way these arguments are passed is that before being passed, uh, they're subject to the so-called default argument promotions. And uh, the first half of that is what we've already covered, which is the integer promotions. So this is what accounts for the fact that in C, um, if you do this, uh, you can pass either a char uh, or a short well, you can pass an int certainly, but you can also pass, well, a char, you can pass an unsigned char, you can pass a short, you can pass an unsigned short. All of the types that get promoted to ints via the integer promotions can be passed because they are promoted via the default argument promotions to, to int. And that's why percent %d works with all of those types. And essentially the same is true as well for something like percent %c. It actually doesn't take a char, it takes an int essentially, but everything is everything's lower rank than int, that is, yeah. Everything is at lower rank, but anyway, like all the char types, all the short types are promoted to it. Um, and so that how it works. Oh yeah, and the other case is uh, beyond the integer promotions is that floats are promoted to doubles. So I think people know this, but that's why there's only one percent f. There's no like lf or you know we have lld for uh, long long, um, but there's no like lf or similar kind of thing long f. Uh, it's all just f because even if you pass um, a single precision float, it's promoted to double. So that's how it works on the C side. And uh, for now, since we don't have our own, own native code backend, I actually don't do the argument promotions because they wouldn't serve a purpose because we don't do anything with the arguments after here. Once we generate our own low level code, we would need to synthesize those conversions and those will be easy to add once we need them, but for now, uh, really, all we do is we resolve those extra arguments to make sure that the those expressions are internally coherent with their types. Um, but yeah, okay. So variadic functions, some lexing and parsing for them. Another small quality of life thing is um, to sort of, you know, a very common pattern in C is this kind of thing here, where you you want to serialize something you have a, a zero initializer um, and you can actually just write like this now do i have more examples of that or is it just that one but um sorry this is actually using multiple features into one um, so v is declared to be a vector um, the right hand side is resolved in the context of v's type which is vector so this is an implicitly typed compound literal which means it has you know, this is the equivalent of this. Um, and because we don't provide any arguments, it does essentially a zero fill, uh, which, you know, it's annoying to have to write something like this all over the place. Um, so that's how that works. And on the C side, it just generates, it just synthesizes the, um, the zero for you. So this is just like a nice little shorthand. Um, and in terms of what we had to do in the code to support that, it was, I think, very simple. Um, it's just literally this. If there's no, uh, if there's no compound fields expressions, then we just emit a zero. <laughs> there may be cases where this doesn't work, and I have to think about that. But the cases I could think of, this works. This is sort of the idiom of just basically doing this to zero initialize something. So, just a little quality of life stuff that was easy to throw in. All right. Um, Okay. Um, okay, a few things I wanted to do today. 
now that we can jump into the code. Actually, let me see if there are questions before we do that um, to the stuff I just covered, uh, but then I'll jump into the code if there's nothing major. Oh, someone's someone caught a typo bug. Um, So where are you saying? Someone's saying I have a redundant variadic equals true as your error. What line do you mean? Oh yeah, we, we will have a bool type. I just haven't implemented it yet. Um, but yeah, we will have that. I don't see where I have a redundant. This looks fine to me. Like, these are different errors, right? They're not the same error, so they're messaged separately. Um, but anyway, let me see if there's any other things. Um, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, someone was commenting when I was talking about not needing temporaries for compound literals when you're passing um, values by pointer. Um, yeah, sockets code is a notorious example where you have to, to, to pass a zero or something, you have to declare a temporary and then sign the value to the temporary and then pass the pointer to the temporary. That's annoying. Um, why do you put void as a parameter? Because that's what C requires. That's how C works. This does not mean the same thing in C. This means it can take any, this is basically like a variadic function in the sense that you can pass any arguments. This means it takes no arguments. That's just how C works. Um, all right. Okay, it looks like there's no major questions. Um, so let me, uh, th there's a bunch of things I wanted to do today. Some of it is actually related to the type system, but um, there's another thing I wanted to do. So right now, the way I'm exposing um, things like printf, I guess in the resolver, right? Um, is I'm just kind of manually hooking it up like this. So one thing I want to do today is I want to be able to declare this sort of stuff in the code so that we can basically write um, something like this. Um, like we, we, you know, you may want to write it in your ion code, but also just because I don't want, you know, I don't want to hard code this in this in the compiler itself. So this will probably be like in the system header, if you will, or some other system code, but I definitely don't want to have this kind of thing in the code itself. For these types, it's a different story because these are built-ins. These are not like typed apps or anything. So this is one thing, uh, but this stuff here, uh, I don't want to have in the compiler, right? Um, so I want to be able to do something like this where um, for printf, for example, um, well, and we also don't support char types. I need to think about that. I haven't added that yet, constant qualified types. But I want to be able to write something like this. I guess actually it's size t, but let's just say it. I want to be able to write something like this. Um, and, um, you know, kind of have that do something reasonable. Um, and let's see. Uh, the idea I had is I'm going to, we're going to need this for other things, but the idea of adding kind of annotations to declarations and eventually not just to declarations, but to other AST entities like statements and expressions and, you know, fields in a struct or union definition or whatever. Um, but anyway, I want to be able to have these kind of annotations where, you know, I don't know if I have to declare a dummy thing first and then it just ignores the declaration or whatever. Maybe I'll do it like this for now, um, where basically it just ends up ignoring it. It doesn't generate C code for it, but it still needs a body. But in any case, some sort of syntax for annotating things. Um, and then we, we will use that to drive the specific code for, for declaring fun, fun, foreign functions, but we can use it for other stuff in the future as well. Eventually, for now, I'll just have it be usable with simple tags, but in the future, you can imagine uh, maybe you can do like this, I don't know, right? Like you can have some arguments, but for now let's just do these sort of uh, pure label like annotations. Um, all right, 
So um, so this involves actually cross-cutting stuff in the compiler. We need to add a new token for the uh, app symbol. And then we need to add parsing rules for, um, for handling this for declarations. And then we need to add new data in the AST for attaching these notes to AST nodes. And then all the way at the end, we need a way to actually check the notes to, to decide how to generate code in the code generator. So um, that's the idea. So let's start with Elixir. Um, so we're just going to add a new token. And um, we're going to add a case one macro. Do we not have any case one instances left? Yes, we do. All right. Um, so now this should uh, be handled as a valid token. And then in the function for parsing these declarations, um, basically, my plan here is before any declaration, there can be a variable number of annotations. Um, actually, let me just define the data structure first. Um, so let's call it like note. And for now, there's just a name. That's all it is. Um, and then there's a note list, which is um, just a bunch of these guys. Um, and so we're going to write a function here, and it's basically just going to say while we can match uh, an at symbol. Um, I think that's how it works, right? Yep. Um, parse note list. Um, you parse a name. Um, and as always, we use our trusty stretchy buffs. Um, yeah, we parse this name. And then once we're done, we turn a note list um, of these notes. Um, and then here we want to basically parse a note list um, and we're going to change this um, so that we can attach the notes to the declaration. Why does it say null here? Oh, right, um, because this is an optional thing. Um, actually, you know what? Let's keep this code as it is, because then we'll do it not in the optional declaration parser, but in the, the other thing. Um,
Okay. So let's see if that works. Okay, that seems to work. Um, let's make sure this stuff is actually hitting. Oh God. Um, hmm. I guess this thing is a. I shouldn't set. We should. This is not quite right. Um, because. I probably want to make this a pointer. Um, or something like this at least. Um, and probably the notes need source positions. Um, Well, it's a little bit awkward with the name collision because I'm using a noun for a function and also as a field, but let's say something like this. Um, let's just call these notes. Um, Right, I guess the node list itself doesn't have any source position. What has sort of, what, what does are the individual elements. Um, I don't think I added the source position for each of these. So here I want to do, um, something like this. And, um, down here we parse this. Let's call it node list. Um, something like that. Let's just verify that works. So notes is currently null, and then when we step over this, we now get uh, one note called foreign. So that looks right. And then um, I should probably add maybe a helper here in the decal section called, um, I don't know, get, get decal note. Um,
and then in the generator, uh, we should do something like this. Um, if not decal, get decal note. Um, Right, so this is not um, see here different cons qualifiers. All oh, right. Um, this is a const decal. What do they, what do they mean? Oh. Um, right. So let's see how that does. So the idea behind this is down in the bowels of the generator, we're going to check whether this thing has a node attached. This is foreign. And if so, we're not going to generate the definition. We'll still de generate the declaration, but not the definition. So I would expect, and, and actually in this case, uh, it's never actually going to look at the body, so we can just have a totally empty definition, uh, even for something that returns a value. So let's see if that worked. So right, you can see there's a declaration, but there shouldn't be, right, there's no definition to go along with it. So um, we should now be able to take all of this stuff out and put it in here. And so func put s, and I'm going to kind of lie and make them stricter than they really are by saying they take con, uh, chars rather than const chars, but that's actually fine for what we're doing. Um, I think something like this, right? Oh, actually, formal parameter. Oh, yeah, I guess we can't really do it that way. Let me, um, since we don't have const qualifiers right now, let me punt on it and say that this actually doesn't even generate forward declarations. Um, gen func def. Uh, we could even do stuff like uh, is decal foreign. Um, get decal note decal foreign name uh, not equal to null. Do this and then if is decal foreign okay. So now um, we will change this eventually, I think, but for now we will just rely on the standard headers to bring in some of these things. Um, but eventually we'll want to generate the actual C prototypes. It's just that right now I can't generate ones that are in complete agreement because we don't have const qualifiers in the type system, which I plan to do this weekend, but uh, don't want to do it this very second. So yeah, if you look at the uh, .c file, um, 
you can see printf is actually not declared or defined anywhere. Uh, so we just rely on this preamble. But uh, the, the point of this is to, from the ion type system point of view, to introduce something like this. So it knows the symbol exists, it's a function, here are the arguments and their types and so on. So, um, yep, that works. Um, okay, so that was one thing I wanted to do. Um, let's see. Okay, what was the next thing? All right, so this is convenient. Um, okay, what was the next thing I wanted to do? I think the next thing I wanted to do was... Oh, right. We still haven't handled all of the specific type checking for um, the binary and unary operators. Um, so let's just go through that one by one with the C standard open to make sure we get something in agreement. Uh, so resolve X for unary. Let's leave this for now, um, even though pointer decay, maybe we'll get to that today as well. Um, but so this is for other unary operators. So let's see what the C standard has to say here. I'll just go through all those cases. Right, so we don't allow this to be used with functions because for us functions always stand for a pointer. There's no need to support that. Um, Same thing there. Right. Um, okay, let's just go through the cases. So, uh, these should have, let's see, plus and minus. These must have arithmetic type. And arithmetic type, it covers ints and floats. Um, and then we do the promotions. Well, we do this stuff. Um, looks reasonable. And then there's, um, I'm trying to remember, what do I call that? Neg. All right. Um, so this can only be used with integer types. This should probably be factored into a function. Um, so resolve unary up um,
Let's see, there should not be anything in this case anymore. Okay, so did that cover that? Okay, let's go to binary. Um, Um, so this is let's see here token mod um, multiplicative relational. All right. Um, so if Let's see here. Need to move this up. Okay, and um, resolve arithmetic, what was it? Resolve, what did we call the other one? Resolve binary arithmetic op. Um, so that's it for the multiplicatives. Um, some of this other stuff is uh, involves pointer arithmetic, so it has to be handled um, more distinctly. So let's see, what, is it, what do they say for add exactly? Um, so let's say if is arithmetic type. Um, then we basically just do this stuff here. Else if um, um, let's see. In this case, um, we have an R value of the same type as the left operand. Um,
no, not arithmetic, so this has to be an integer type. Um, and here the error is Um, and then for sub, I think we have the same thing where certainly one, one possibility is that they're both arithmetic, um, but then let's see. The left operand is a pointer okay so let's do that first um, so if if one of them is a pointer and the other is an integer type then um, this is just pointer arithmetic again uh, otherwise you know, uh, both of them have to be pointers. Um, actually, let me handle it here so we can do some specific. Uh, so if um, Right now I'm not doing pointer decay, um, so I will revisit that in a sec. So right now if you try to subtract something from an integer array or add to an integer array, it won't do pointer decay, but I think that's okay for now. So, uh, right, binary shift operators. So one thing that's different, and this is something we didn't kind of do correctly in our initial pass, is unlike other binary operators, you apply the integer promotions to both of the arguments, but you don't you don't do the integer you don't do the arithmetic conversions. <clears throat> so for example, um, if you do something like uh, I don't know unsigned int um, left shift. Uh, unsigned long, 
these don't get promoted. These are the actual values as far as this operation is concerned. Uh, this doesn't get promoted to a long first or something like that. And as a result, uh, this actually gives an unsigned end as a result, right? So the left operand, the promoted type for the left operand is the result type. It doesn't unify the two, the two things. Um, so we will actually just kind of do that manually here, I think. Um, maybe we can still exploit some of this stuff. Yeah, we can we can still exploit this. Um, There we go. Uh, eval binary op. Um, oh, and they don't have a common type, so no, we can't really exploit that actually, can we? Um, maybe we'll do this a little more manually then. Um, Um, token Elsha, or uh, let's just call it op. Um, Actually, let me let me write it like this: uh, result type. Oh, right. Um, you know what? Um, I 
I'm going to factor this out in a sec, but it's kind of annoying. No, actually, I think if I do this, then I can just use uh, resolve binary arithmetic up. Um, Yeah, because this is the promotions. I guess I just need to factor. Maybe I'll just put this. Yeah, that feels a little bit wrong. Okay, let's just leave it like that. So we do the manual conversion to the common type ourselves. Doesn't feel great. Anyway, let me just move ahead. Otherwise, I'll get too distracted with that. Um, Mm. Yeah, that's probably fine. For now? Okay. That was shift. Um... So this is um so what does it say? What is real type? I can't remember that term. Real type. So this was page eighty five. Why is this not called arithmetic type? Look at this. What? All right, guys. Let's invent some terms redundantly for the same things, from what I can tell. I guess they mean specifically that you can't order complex numbers, right? But complex numbers are not considered arithmetic types, I guess. Okay. Oh, wait, so it is complex numbers, Sean. Sean on the. I guess that maybe is. All right. We don't have complex numbers, so. Um. So um, let's see here. If we have arithmetic type, you know what? Let me put this back in because now we're calling it again. Unify arithmetic operands. 
uh, left and right. And then let's just factor this out into um, Um, and I guess the question is, what is the result type? Yeah, it's always int. That's what I thought. Um, convert to type int. Okay. Um, Um, let's see, and this can, I think it's just an R value of type int. So maybe we should just move that in there. Excuse me, I have to sneeze. <clears throat> False alarm. Just a cough. Um, I did that. So, right. Um, Let's look for that.
because it's the same sort of deal. We have to convert it to an at, at the end. Um, Some of this stuff is a little bit redundant, should probably be factored out. Right now we don't have proper support for nulls, so let me just ignore that case. Okay, probably a bunch of these can be handled under the same rubric. Because a function is technically a scalar type, because our function is a, um, a pointer type, unlike C. Um, no. no, that actually is true. Even in C, it will auto convert it, so we don't have to worry about it, I think. Um, Um, if scalar type, well, actually, let me do it this way. Um, because if it's arithmetic type, we can actually do constant evaluation. So we do have to handle it somewhat specially. Um, Actually, let me think about it. No, that's, it's not really the binary arithmetic conversions. It's not how you have to handle that. Um, oops, what's the right way to do that? I guess, um, Let's see here. The only thing we care about is their non zero ness, their truthiness. Um,
All right, so let me um, let me start with this. Let me not do the full constant evaluation properly for now. Um, so in in any case, this is just an integer uh, our value. Um, Um, then you can say if this is const, or actually, let me do it like this. Again. Basically what I want is I want some sort of truthiness thing for constants. Um, eval uh, truthiness. What are they? Oh, I guess I could just do a comparison to zero. So I could just exploit the existing stuff like um, token EQ. Um, Promote zero to that type. Yeah, let's do that. Um, so actually, let me just, I don't want to deal with that right now. Let's just do this. I want to finish this off before the stream ends so we can see it working, hopefully. Okay. Um, and an or, and then conditional stuff. I don't think we handle conditional operators uh, correctly either. Yeah, and I have some weird pointer decay stuff left over. I need to revisit that. Um, first operand must have scalar type. Oh, this one's annoying. Okay, let's just go through the decision tree. The, the good old decision tree. Um, actually, let me call it left and right. Because then X was annoying. Correct in the face of grammar. So let's call this left and right. Um, 
if they have arithmetic type, then we need to do the arithmetic conversions. Um, and then we can do something like this. Only then can we do something like that. Uh, and otherwise, it's just uh, our value. Um, well, I guess there is some point where we can just say, if they have the same types, then we do something like this. Right, we also have to do something for assignments because assignments are also operators in that similar way. Um, so right now we're definitely not doing the right thing for that. Uh, we just require perfect, well, it tries to do a conversion. So let me see what it does here. What is simple assignment? Right, right, okay. Um, there's an op, right? It really feels like there should be a, a case for this. Um, It's going to be pretty big, I think. Um, oh, stupid. Okay. Um, and I think. Actually, it's one and a half hour. Let me um, let me not do these assignment things. Um, let's just test some of the other stuff we did. Let's first check that we didn't break anything, which is always a, a good first step. So, I mean, we don't have very exhaustive testing in test one right now, but at least just make sure stuff isn't totally broken. Um, so let's go and actually test some of the things we implemented. Um, Oh, wrong file. Uh, okay. And so, um, I, I, I'll spend five minutes doing some testing and then I'll stop the stream so it doesn't get too long for the mainstream. I'll continue in the, the extra stream, but I just want to show some basic stuff working, hopefully. 
uh, what was it? Resolve expression unary. Um, right, so you should be able to um, you know, let's just make some constants here. Um, you should be able to do something like um, you know, if, if, if f is a float as well, you should be able to do like plus pi minus pi. Hmm. Why is it not letting me step in? Okay. Um, this should not work. Oops. But if you have something like minus one, um, and you negate it, that should work. No, undeclared identifier. Yeah, that's interesting. That to me sounds like, oh no, <laughs> that's funny. It, it looks like we didn't add that symbol to the lexer table. On file. So n is minus one, and now it should be zero. Yep. Um, let's do some of the stuff for binary operators. You should be able to uh, multiply stuff. Divide. Actually, can you? Oh, yeah, that's wrong. You cannot do that with mod. Um, Okay, but I, I should be able to do this. Um, I don't know. Three modulo two. Should be one. Um, I guess I should check that this got synthesized correctly as well. Should be one for F. Um, Add and so let's. I guess let's try both. Uh, something like this, and I guess maybe let's uh, do something that requires promotions. Um, and let's also do something with pointers. So um, if I take the address of n. 
Can I add one? Does that work? It does appear to work. Oh yeah, I didn't think I showed this. You can do hover over here as well, which is pretty nice. Um, so this is four and should be five. No, it shouldn't be five. It should be whatever the size of int is. Yeah, so that's right, eight. Um, we should also be able to do something like n equals p minus p plus 1, or say p plus 1 minus p. Okay, that didn't work. Illegal conversion and assignment. Um, which is not very specific. I should probably print the types, but I don't think I have code for printing stuff like that right now. So p plus 1 is a pointer, and I think that works given that this thing worked. p itself is a pointer. I think we just don't have the right types for subs. Um, right, this should be... Let's see, type s size. I think I already have u size, right? Um, this is again hard coded, but I'm just going to do like this. Wait, why is this not hitting? Okay, so that works as well now. Um, So that was subtraction of pointers, addition of integers to pointers, uh, shifting. I guess the test here really is to make sure that, I guess we don't have a good way of testing that it works quite as we want. Um, but yeah, suppose we do something like this at least. Let's verify that the basic stuff works. Um, okay, so um, this should be greater than that. Just test all these. So B should be one. This should be one as well. This should be zero. This should be one. Oh no, sorry. Uh, this should be zero as well. Okay. Um, and I guess let's also test it for like. Um, pi is greater than, or something like this. Should be zero. This should be one. Um, and for EQ. Both pointers these actually ended up being the same case, didn't they? Let me just look.
Okay, let's do some bitwise stuff. Um, this shouldn't change the value. This should mask off some stuff. So n is 1. This should not change it, nor should this. Actually, let me just say n is, I don't know, something like that. This should not change it. Oh, no, it should. Oh, that's a bug, right? Oh, no. That actually is correct. It should mask off the lowest bit. So 256 becomes 254, or 255 becomes 254, and this should then make it into 0, right? Or 1. Oh, no, because we're not doing it on B, we're doing it on N, so that's right. All right. Um, let's maybe do that, and then XOR uh, 1. to be 255, right? Yep. Um, so yeah, so here we could have literally different types. So it could be like P and Pi. That should work. These are both non-zero. So B should be one. Okay. All right. Um, it's an hour and 45 minutes. I think this is a good stopping point. I think we're getting closer and closer to something that's starting to get there. Um, let me just do Q and A and then I will take, I'll continue. Well, maybe actually I won't do an extra stream because I think I did almost everything I wanted uh, for the stream. But uh, let me do a Q and A then and then we'll, we'll call it a day for the streaming. All right, let me just read back and see if I missed anything. Yeah, if anyone has questions, feel free to ask. Um, you can hopefully see that this stuff was not, I mean, I'm sure there's bugs, right, in code I wrote, but um, like it's all just programming you just go through and you do the thing right you do the thing required there's there's no magic in this stuff um, and we are inching closer and closer to a C compiler which is not what I really set out to do but um, I'm not unhappy with how this is ending up All right. If uh, if there are no questions, I will just stop uh, stop the stream for now and work on kicking the tires a little bit on this, and then I'll push the code if anyone wants to take a look at it on the GitHub. But uh, yeah. Um, so what did we do today? We did the variadic functions, and we did the code review from the previous day, and then we did um, basically all the remaining. Just walk through all the unary and binary operators and ternary even, and uh, took care of it. Uh, I think the next thing I need to do today is I need to get a handle on pointer decay. It's not really hard, but the way the C standard specifies it makes it... Actually, let me show you quickly how pointer decay is defined. It's defi There's so much in the C standard that's not, be in my mind, befitting a formal language definition, or even informal. Um, I guess they don't use the word decay here. But they basically say something like, see if I can find it. It's the weirdest negative description I've ever seen for something like a, spe like a standard for language. But they basically say an array can be used as a pointer except in, and then they mention like four cases, which is like size of the and operator, 
and maybe one other case, or I guess maybe two or three cases, not four. But like they, they describe it in terms of it can be used as a pointer except in these contexts, which is like, you know, if you think about how you define a, an interpreter or like if you think of how you would de de describe, make a formal description of something, you never say this thing happens there except in these cases because you have to affirmatively do the decay in the semantics. You can't freaking express it like that. So I, the standard does that all over the place. It's insane. Anyway, um, so I have to figure out where the best place is to do the decay. It's not hard um, to do it. I could literally take the tack the standard implies by saying that um, by, I don't know. Anyway, I will handle that today. Um, but it, it just annoys me how the standard specifies that stuff. All right, I'm out. So uh, thanks for hanging out. I will push the code when I had a chance to quickly test it a bit more.